apologies to those of you who were here a couple of years ago when I shared a similar message because I really feel to do this again. I want to have some fun this morning. Aren't you sick of doom and gloom? You know, I want to have some fun this morning. And so I thought what I'd do is I'd speak on my favorite topic, which is vision. Because as an optometrist, I feel that I've got every right to speak on vision. So if you've seen these before, please don't spoil it for everyone else. No spoiler alerts. Um, But I think I'm uniquely qualified to speak on vision. Vision is the dominant sense we have. If we had to say to you, if you could lose one of your five senses, the one on the bottom of the list would probably be vision because we we use it so much as we navigate our way through life. We rely on vision to live our lives. Now, we all saw that 2020... Uh, Everybody was saying this 2020, because of 2020 vision, was was declared a year of vision. But it was more like a chance to reset our vision, because all of our visions, mine in particular, got thrown out in 2020. Is anybody with me? I was going to go to Italy in April. That didn't work out. Um, So, yeah. So our vision was slightly sort of realigned and reset. You're probably wondering what 2020 vision is. Are are you familiar, familiar with the phrase, obviously? 2020 is because the Americans use feet. We call it 6'6 vision. They call it 2020 vision because 20 feet is 6 metres. Okay? And what it means, it doesn't mean excellent vision. It just means average good vision. Uh, and so what it actually means is that at 20 feet, you can see what normal people would see at 20 feet. Hence, 20 slash 20. So 2020 was a year of vision that never happened. But I believe that 2021 is our chance to pursue the vision that God has reassembled after the debacle of 2020. Is anyone with me? Because yeah. I think God's got more for us. I really believe that. And uh, both... Uh, as, both individually as servants of the Lord and together as a church. So what I wanted to do is to have a look at vision and have a bit of a play around with it and have a bit of fun. You're going to need to be able to see the screen. So if you can't see the screen, make a bit of a shuffle round. If you can see the screen sideways, good for you. Um, you've heard the saying, none so blind as those who cannot see. Has anybody heard that? The old saying is still true. Those who cannot or will not see. Helen Keller once said this, I have walked with people whose eyes are full of light, but who see nothing. They see nothing in the woods or the sky, nothing in sports, nothing on the streets. Their souls voyage through and this enchanted world is a barren waste. You see, you can see stuff, but not see it. You can have eyes open, but not see. You can see the physical world around you and miss the spiritual world. And we can even see exactly the same thing but understand it completely differently and get completely different meanings out of it, even though we're seeing the same information. Here's an example. Have a look at this. Now, if you know the answer, don't shout it out. But what's that? You're all confused, aren't you? Matthew 13, verse 14 to 15, Jesus said this. In their case, the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. You will, you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull. With their ears, they can barely hear with their eyes. They have closed lest They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn, and I would heal them. See, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees there, the, the religious people who were religious and pious and dedicated, but completely missed the plot. They could see, but they couldn't see. And that's probably you're experiencing, some of you at least are experiencing this now. What's this a picture of? Sorry? A person's face? Any other ideas? He says a cow. Any other ideas? Any Freudians here that see an ink blot? It's a mess? Okay, now this is, in, in fact, Gabriel is correct. Because it is, in fact, a cow. Can you see that? Now, we're all seeing the same thing, but some of us are not getting it. Gabriel's getting it, but many of us are not getting it. This is clear. I look at this, and it's clearly a cow to me, because I've seen this before. (laughs) So I'm going to point out some things, and some of you, the penny will drop, and suddenly these lines and blotches will, will make sense. Watch this. This is a cow. Face, two eyes, nose, body out here. Who can see it? The rest of you need to come to my office. <laughs> Cause it, okay, the, the two eyes of a cow and it's, it's snout and nose. See, the more information I give you, the more you actually see it. There's even barbed wire in the background. How good is that? So we're all seeing the same thing, but we're not getting it. The difference between sight and vision 
is that it might seem slight, but it's enormous. See, sight is just seeing stuff. You all just saw that stuff. But when I give you extra information, suddenly sight becomes vision and you understand what you're seeing. Perception is not simply the act of seeing. It is the act of making sense of what we see. If you have a Bible, you might want to turn to Proverbs 29, verse 18, a very famous verse when it comes to vision. And it says this, without a vision, the people perish. Uh, Or in the ESV, it says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. So without a vision, the people perish. Does that mean the blind people are going to hell? Of course it doesn't. It's not talking about that sort of vision. The Hebrew word here used for vision is the word hazon, which means a revelation, a dream, an oracle from God. It means a revelation from God. Without a God-revealed vision, the people perish. The word for perish is the word para, which means to cut loose, throw off restraint, to rebel, neglect, and perish. So what it means is really to self-destruct. It means that without a God-given vision, people self-destruct. Don't believe me? Have a look around, around our, our beautiful COVID-free coast. You know, we, we should be rejoicing. We're not in lockdown. We're not even in lockup. We're not even locked sideways. We are free. And just down the road, they're not. We should be rejoicing. But if you look around our coast, people are self-destructing all over the place, whether it's drugs or alcohol or sleeping around or following worthless ideas or working themselves into the ground or sitting in front of a TV and wasting their time. People are not productive. They're not doing things that are spiritually eternal and have importance. People without God and without a God-given, Holy Spirit-inspired, eternal vision for their life, very often self-destruct. And even if things go well, they seem to sabotage it. How many of you know that there are some people that if, if life starts to go well, they find something wrong and they sabotage their whole life, right? Because there is no vision there. There's no God-given vision. They just float along. And they hope to achieve something of value, but usually they achieve nothing of eternal value. See, vision is what drives us on. It's what drives us forward when all around is dark. Now, we have a vision in this church to see our church reach our community. We want to be a community reaching a community. And we want to see lives change for the Lord. Are you with me? That's a good thing, right? But our vision gives us purpose. It gives us a a direction, gives us drive. It will drive us maybe to a different place. But we, we want to take all of our time, effort, money, energy, everything. And we want to make sure that we have an eternal impact on our community for Christ, don't we? See, without a God-given vision, your life, my life, without a revelation of how God sees me and and that he has plans to prosper me and not harm me, most people, (laughs) they stunt their potential and eventually destroy themselves or waste their life. But God doesn't want that for you. God has big plans for your life because you are precious and you're special and you are full of destiny and potential if only you can see yourself as he sees you. So I am praying for a spiritual revelation for you this morning, that you will start to see things God's way, not just the physical way that you're seeing it now. And I'm praying and believing that 2021 will be different, that you will see in the spirit and see an eternal perspective. Do you remember uh, over in 2 Kings chapter 6, if you go over there, the, the, the prophet Elisha was there and they sent an army of Syrians to capture him and his servant went out, looked at the army and went, holy moly, we are ne- there's a whole army here and there's just two of us and we don't have any weapons. And he came back and he said to the prophet, man, we're in trouble. There's a whole army out here. And this is what Elisha said. Listen to this, verse 16. He said this, do not be afraid for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said, O Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. You see, there's a world you don't see because your heart is not open to see it. And I'm the same. So let's just pray for a moment. Lord, I pray that you will give us a perspective today as we face 2021. (coughs) That we would see Jesus in things, not Satan. That we would see the things of God, not the things of this world. I ask this in Jesus' name. Have a look at this slide. This is what I'm talking about. See, it depends on how you see the world. It's exactly the same. I choose this side, don't you? I think that makes sense. So let me me talk about what influences your vision. See, vision is the product, not just of what you see. It's the product of your learning that has gone beforehand. What influences your vision? 
you might look at this and see a cloud. I kind of see a bird. Anybody see a bird? Isn't it amazing? Vision is affected by many things because vision is not sight. Vision is the product of what you see plus your past and your learning and your influences and your beliefs. So I want to look at six things that influence your vision in 2021. The first thing is how you see God. That's, that really influence, influences your vision. So how do you see God? Let me ask you that this morning. How do you see God? Do you see him as angry and vindictive? Do you see him as distant and disengaged? Or do you see him as someone who's right here, loving, leading and guiding your life and your vision? See, Matthew 5 verse 8 says this, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I want to be pure in heart. A pure heart enables you to see God properly. God loves you. He is not vindictive. He is not angry at you and wanting to ruin your life. He's not trying to ruin your fun. He's not trying to ruin you know, various aspects of your life and he doesn't want your money. He actually has a plan for you. As Jeremiah 29, we often quote this. <coughs> we often quote verse 11. You know the verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to what? Prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. But we forget the next two verses. It says, it's, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. We forget those two verses. You see, if you seek him, if you seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, all these other things are added to you. Don't worry about the other things. You need to see things God's way. If you decide to ignore God, if you don't listen to his directions or go your own way, why should he bother prospering your life and giving you a life that, that, that you could only have dreamed of? If you disobey him constantly... If you never run towards him, but always run away from him, how's he going to bless you? When you have the right perception, <coughs> you will see God as he truly is, a loving, caring father who wants the best for you and who is on your side. He's not against you. He's for you and he loves you. And when you seek him, he promises you will find him. So some of you here, even starting into the year 2021, are a bit distant from God. Maybe you've been closer to him in the past. This is the moment to say, Lord, I want to get close to you again. Because as we face this new year, it is better to face this new year with God than it is to do it by yourself. Any person plus God is a majority. And I'd like to face 2021 as a majority. Most people ignore God. You know that. But even Christians do this. Most people ignore God and, they, and his direction and they go their own selfish ways. They satisfy their own selfish whims. And then when it all fails, who do they blame? God. <coughs> they make a series of foolish, irrational, wrong decisions. And then when it all falls apart, God, why did you do this to me? There's a verse that sums it up. Proverbs 19 verse 3. Listen to this. When a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. Isn't that true? How true is that? How you perceive God affects everything. Many people blame God for things they do to themselves. In their perception, they see God as doing things he never did. And if we, we can imagine things that are there, we can be tricked into seeing things that are not really there. Here's an example. Have a look at these. The, can you see movement in those? Isn't that weird? It's not moving, but who can see movement? Can you see it? Have a look at the next one. If you look at one circle, you'll notice the other circles are moving. Who can see that? And if you look over here, this is completely stationary, but if you move your head like this, you'll see the middle bits moving back and forth. Can you do that? Oh, I'm loving what I'm seeing you watching you all do this. <laughs> It's, it's really, it's really funny. <laughs> this is like the sound of music, you know. Oh, la, 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 la. But um, can you see the movement in there if you move your head back and forward? Walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> the second thing that affects your vision is how you see yourself. See, most people really don't like what they see. Yeah, isn't that cute? <coughs> our view of ourselves is shaped by what we've experienced and words that have been spoken over. So perhaps in your past somewhere you've been put down by a parent or by a partner, you've been told you're worthless, that you'll never amount to anything. 
And maybe your life so far has been a self-fulfilling prophecy. But when you see things God's way, when you see with his eyes, when you, when you see with true vision, you start to believe God who says you are precious and you are special. In fact, David writes in Psalm 139, I love this, verse 13 to 14, you formed my inward parts, you knitted me together in my mother's womb. That's why I am against abortion. Because we are knitted together in our mother's womb by God before birth. You don't magically become a person at birth. You're a person, I believe, at conception. That's what the Bible teaches. And it says this, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you feel fearfully and wonderfully made? Some of you don't. I'm sure. You really are. Let me tell you how fearfully and wonderfully made you are. Did you know the average human body contains enough sulfur to kill all the fleas on an average dog? It contains enough carbon to make 900 pencils. It contains enough potassium to fire a toy cannon. And it contains enough fat to make seven bars of soap. In fact, in my case, it's probably a little bit more than seven. We won't go there. And enough water to fill a 50-litre barrel. Did you know that the human brain has a memory capacity which is the equivalent of a four terabyte hard drive? Did you know that? You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Nerve impulses in the human body move at 90 metres per second. Did you know that 100,000 chemical reactions occur in the human brain every second? 100,000 chemical reactions every second. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Your brain has 70,000 thoughts per day. Four-year-olds have a question for every one of those. (laughs) 70,000 thoughts per day. And did you know that you can remember 50,000 different smells, different scents? Did you know that? Some more so than others. Did you know that you smell unique? You smell different. That's how your dog knows who you are, because you smell different to the next person. And I, I got a, a phone that I think has a 32 megapixel camera in it. I think that's pretty incredible. But did you know if your eye was a digital camera, it would be 576 megapixels and distinguish 10 million different colors. Your eye can distinguish 10 million different colors. And if you're a woman, you can name all of those. But if you're a man, they all look like the same. I'm a man. When we get to colour, when my wife and I go to choose things, I say, I am Windows default setting, 16 colours, that's all I see. So I don't, I don't see fuchsia, I see pinky, pinky purple. I don't see aqua, I see bluey green, you know? So let's have a look at some other things that can distort your vision a little bit. Have a look at this. Those lines are straight. They're exactly parallel. Do they look straight? They don't. See, your mind is playing tricks on you. Your eyes are playing tricks on you. How about this one? <coughs> Those, each circle is perfectly circular. Does it look it? It does not, does it? Why? Because your perception is being messed with at the moment. The third thing that affects our vision is how we see other people. See, when you see God correctly and yourself correctly and his beloved creation correctly, then you start to see other people in their right perspective. As humans, we are naturally selfish and self-centered. Did you know that? How many of you know that? Think about it. You don't have to teach a child to be bad or selfish, do you? We have to teach them to be good and to be kind. But being bad and selfish is our natural skill as people. We're very good at it. Uh, We tend to put ourselves as number one before others and we see others as commodities at times saying, what can I get from this person or what can this person do for me? Even when we come to Christ, shock, we're still selfish. We really are. And we often see others as servants or as an end to the causes that we believe in. Now, I confess to you, I try and be a godly man and it mostly works, I hope, But when I get behind the wheel of a car, that mantle just cracks right open. (laughs) If you don't believe you're selfish, men, get behind the wheel of a car on the road. And then you'll find out you are what? Selfish. Because if you sit there saying, oh, after you, oh, you never get anywhere. 
I remember years ago, my, I, I was at uh, the conference for uh, evangelists in, in Amsterdam, and uh, we were staying at Utrecht outside of Amsterdam. I was staying there with, uh, with hundreds and hundreds of evangelists from all around the world. And they ran trains from there into the Amsterdam arena where the conferences were. And I'll never forget this. We had, I had a couple of Americans with me, and uh, I think a, a Filipino and a, a few others that I'd just met. And... Um, but the Americans and the Australians, we, we were the bunnies for sure because there were Africans and Indians everywhere. And we were standing on this platform. And I kid you not, I'm standing at the front of the platform and the, the train pulls in, the doors open. Boom, then the doors shut and off the train. And I'm still standing in the same spot. But all these guys who were really good at pushing got in and pushed around and I just couldn't move. And pretty soon the, the train was full and I didn't even get on. You see, because we are naturally selfish. We put ourselves first, don't we? Yes, thank you very much. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, your vision starts to change and you begin to see other people, all other people, all other people as precious and valuable and as lost without Jesus. So it doesn't matter if they're black or white, rich or poor, gay or straight, every person has value in God's eyes, even if they're sinning. The Holy Spirit can help you to see people as God does. And so you're able to look behind their behavior behind the tantrums and the selfishness and the deception and the anger to see the pain and the hurt and the fear that drives the the behavior that you're witnessing. So you can start to see other people with God's eyes and you will see people differently. Let's have a look at this one. Columns. But what do you see? You can see people. Who can see people? If If you see God's way, you can see people. What's the next one? Oh, that's very cool. (laughs) That is very cool. (laughs) If you saw that, you wouldn't see people, would you? But uh, there you go. See, the right vision allows you to see the heart of people and to love them unconditionally. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, the Lord said to Samuel when he was looking, remember he was selecting David from among his brothers, when he, uh, one of David's brothers, the Lord said this to Samuel, the Lord sees not as man sees, the Lord, uh, man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. And I think that as we begin to get our vision right, we start to see through things and begin to see the heart that is behind everything. Is there another one there? Probably not. I was getting excited about this time. Nope. There you go. The fourth thing that affects how you see everything is how you see your circumstances. The more we see the power of heaven, the less we shall fear the troubles of earth. When you have the right vision, you realize the truth that circumstances don't determine your destiny. Choices do. I'm sick of hearing people say, oh, it's fate. It was destiny. Fate, destiny, call it what you will, is a series of choices that we make. It really is. We are the product of our choices, folks. That's why we can't blame anybody else for how wrong our life goes. We should man up and blame ourselves. Uh, Psalm 112, verses 6 to 7 says, For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. So no no matter what you face... (coughs) No matter what life throws up at you in 2021, if you know God and you trust him, you have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. From this pandemic, yes, be wise. Yes, socially distance, all that sort of stuff. Wash your hands. Probably should be doing that anyway, guys. Um, But you have nothing to fear because our destiny is in God's hands and it's a product of our choices. God is a good God. God is a good, good God on your worst day as well as on your best day. He's always a good God. He never changes from everlasting to everlasting. He is God. Malachi 3, 6, for I, the Lord, do not change. So what does, does change is us. When we look at our circumstances, we change. Don't believe me? Remember Peter walking on the water? He gets out of the boat full of faith. He's walking on the top of the water. But what happens? He looks, <coughs> looks around at the circumstance he looks around at the storm and suddenly he begins to sink because we when we take our eyes off the lord and look at our circumstances we begin to be in trouble we should we shouldn't be getting uh, under our circumstances I often say to people you know say to people how are you doing they say pretty good under the circumstances what are you doing under there we should live above the circumstances why because We're not a product of our circumstances. And if you see someone who is a mature Christian who loves God, when things go wrong, they have a a hope in their heart that God's going to make it right, don't they? 
They don't collapse under the pressure and under the fear. So let's have a look at some of the external factors that can affect our vision. This is interesting. Did you know these guys are the same size? Do they look it? Let me show you. One, two, three. Same size. But what is around it is affecting its, well, how you see it. The circumstances affect how you see it. These two dots are the same size. But it's affected by what's around it. So see, if you, if you see things around it, it can affect the way you see truth. You couldn't believe that that is the same size as that, but it is. It truly is. How about this one? This line is the same as that one. It doesn't look it, does it? What's around it is affecting how you see it. And these two lines are the same length. But what is around it is affecting how you see it. So, how, another thing that can affect how you see things is how you see your past. Because vision is not simply sight. It has your experience and your learning and all this sort of stuff factored into it. Have you done things you're ashamed of in your past? Do you still feel guilt? The Bible says that when you come to, listen to this, if, you, if you're carrying guilt and shame for something you've done in the past, listen to what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. It's a fresh start. In the same way that 2020 with its COVID shenanigans wiped the slate clean for many of us, we hit reset and we're able to make a fresh start in 2021. And what we need to do right now is to listen to the Lord and obey him, not carry the baggage of the past into our future. But the problem is we imprint what's gone on in the past over our future and it affects the way we see things. Have a look at this. Have a look at... The queen's nose. Everybody stare straight at it. Don't look anywhere else. Don't look to the right or to the left. Just look straight at it. If you can't see it, you might be a bit tired on the side there. But just look straight at it. Don't, don't look anywhere else. And when we go to the next slide, which is blank, blink a couple of times and you'll see her up there. Isn't that incredible? That's called an after image. You've sort of burned the past into your, into your eyes and you imprint it on what is happening in your, in your uh, life. How about this one? We can even do it in color. Look right at this little X right here. Everybody stare right at it. Because what we're doing here is we're bleaching out the cones in your eye. Stare right. Don't look anywhere else. It doesn't work if you look anywhere else. Just stare at it. Next slide. Blink a couple of times. It's in color. What can I say? And isn't that incredible? But we do this all the time. We take what's happened in the past and we imprint it on the future. And some of you here need to let go of what, make the past past at last and, and start with a clean slate and move into a wonderful future that the Lord has for you instead of hanging on to the past and superimposing that on your current circumstances. The sixth and final thing that affects how we see Oh, no, here's another one. Sorry, I forgot about this. Can't forget the Mona Lisa. Look at her nose. This is how detailed it gets. An after image can get. Look right at her nose. Everyone stare at it. Don't move. And now this. Can you see her? Incredible detail. And you can, you can imprint incredible details of your past onto onto your current life and mess it up. So let's talk about your future. How you see your future is the, the final thing that affects your vision. How we see circumstances affects how we see our future. Many of us experience fear as we face struggles, difficulties, sickness, lack of money, conflict, shame, whatever it is. Yet this morning, I believe God would say to you to look beyond what is happening now in your life and see the future that he has for you. Romans 8.28 says this, and we know that those who love God, that all things work for good for those who love God who've been called according to his purpose. All things work for good. Even the bad stuff, even the painful stuff, God can, God can make lemonade out of lemons. He really can. If we bring him the lemons. If we try and do it ourselves, you get stuck with the sour taste. But if you bring him the lemons, then he can make something incredible of your life and of your future. With Christ, you can face anything if you have the right vision. You can put up with any pain, any trial, any sickness, any temptation. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Remember we were looking in the last couple of weeks, we were looking at Numbers 13 and the spies who went into the land, who came back with different reports. 
Two of them came back and said, yeah, man, that's the promised land. This is awesome. We're going to go in there, going to take this thing. It's incredible. But 10 came back with this report saying it was terrible. Numbers 13 verse 27 says this. This is their first report. When they're first reporting back to the people, they say this. We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. It has a big, you know, lots of grapes on a stick sort of thing. It flows with milk and honey. But just four verses later, it says this. The land through which we've gone to spy out is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people we saw there are of great height. So it went from being a land of milk and honey and prosperity and wonderful to being a land that devours its inhabitants in four verses. Why? Because they didn't see their future God's way. They didn't see it. He says, it's not about sight. Because all of those 12 spies saw the same things. But 10 of them chose to see it one way and two chose to see it God's way. And it's about how we understand and interpret things. So don't let your view of the future be affected by things you've got in the past. You've you've got to look to God because your future is in his hands, not yours. Let's have a look at some of this. This is fun as well. There's some, just some really cool photographs of people messing with your head. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and, and if you want to eat some, uh, some soldiers, there you go. You know, this is, this is a fisheye lens. I mean, you know, this, this is where optical illusions are fun because they mess with your head. And you have the opportunity to get your head straight now as we hit 2021 and get it right. But your brain is so incredible. What you have learned is imprinted, so it changes the way you see things. Have a look at this one. Now, list off the colors as fast as you can. Not the words, the colors. Ready? Go. Faster, come on. Yes, you're all getting messed up, aren't you? Why? You're, what, are you colorblind or something? What's going on? It's really hard, isn't it? Why? Because... Because your knowledge of the word overtakes your knowledge of the color. And when you go through it fast, your brain doesn't cope. It defaults to what it is comfortable with, which is the knowledge of the word. Have a look at this one. This is cool. If you can read this, you have a strong mind. What does it say? Read it together. This message serves to prove how minds can do amazing things. Impressive things. Even though that makes no sense, you're all making sense out of it. Why? Because you have knowledge already, and that's what you call upon to get it right. You see, God's so much more than optical illusions, but these serve to illustrate just how amazing you are. How, but you take all these horrible things that have been done in the past and imprint them on your life and they go into the future and it affects your future. You need to see your future God's way. Let me read to you a poem which I love. Corrie ten Boom popularized this poem. It's called The Weaving. And I love this poem because it really puts it in perspective. Thanks, Raymond, if you can put the next slide up. Because this is the, the top and the bottom. Listen to what the, the poem says. My life is but a weaving between my God and me. I cannot choose the colors. He weaveth steadily. Oft times he weaveth sorrow, and I in foolish f- pride forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and all the shuttles cease to fly will God unroll the canvas and reveal the reasons why. The dark threads are as needful in the weaving his skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern that he's planned he knows he loves he cares nothing this truth can dim he gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him is that beautiful and some some of you here need to hear that you're busy telling god what he should do but you see that and he's creating that in your life See, we need to have eyes to see. Let me wrap it up. As Christians, we have to develop two sets of eyes. We have to keep looking at life, at the world in which we live, but we also need God's perspective because that changes everything. Now, this is a little fish that comes from the Amazon, and it's called four eyes, which is not being rude. It's just what they call the fish colloquially. 
<clears throat> and it has these bulging eyes on the top of its head. This fish can cruise just under the top of the water and with the upper half of its eye, it keeps it above the surface. With the lower part of its eye, it's under the water. Now, the top half of, of its eye has a different lens to the bottom part of its eye. Effectively, it amounts to a set of bifocals that this fish is wearing. So it can see above the water and under the water simultaneously. That's the kind of vision we need as Christians. We need to have our eyes fixed on the Lord. We need to have our eyes fixed on, on, on the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But we also need to see the needs and the, the, the uh, wiles of the enemy around us. We have to have bifocals, spiritual bifocals. Are you up for spiritual bifocals this morning? I think we need it to see both at once. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, this, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Get that. To Most of us don't use the top part of our bifocals. But this fish does, and I believe in 2021, what we focus on will determine what we perceive. We sang earlier today, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth grow what? Strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Or as this verse in 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, we look not to things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. What we focus on determines what we see. So we're going to do a little bit of experiment as we wrap it up here. I'm going to put this slide up. Have a look. Well, that's the next one. Go to the next one. I did that first. Have a look at this black dot here. Just stare at the black dot. Now, you're aware that there's a, a grey mist around it, right? Can you see that? Just stare at the black dot. Don't look anywhere else. But as you stare at that black dot, the grey mist disappears. Isn't that incredible? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And what? The things of earth grow strangely dim. That mist around it disappears if you just focus on that dot. And that's what it's like. If you focus on the Lord, the things around you will grow strangely dim. Have a look at this one. Just look at the um, next one. Thanks, Ryan. Just look at the little red heart there. Stare at the red heart. Don't look anywhere else. Just stare right at it. Because, of course, when we go to the next slide and take it away, you can see Jesus. And we need to imprint Jesus, not our past, imprint Jesus on everything we see. Everything we look at, we need to have an imprint of Jesus. Let's do it again. Just go back one for us. Stare at the heart. I want everyone to get this. Stare right at that heart. Don't look anywhere else. Don't look to the right or the left or up or down. Just stare at the heart. Don't move a muscle because when we take it away, blink a couple of times. You see him? And you can go into 2021 imprinting Jesus on everything you see, seeing with eternal eyes instead of just with natural eyes. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So all you need, the great things God wants you to have in your life, for each of us, for us as a church, they are ours, but not if we focus on them, if we focus on him. If we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, the other things come. And if they don't come, we don't want them because we're focused on him. That's how it works. Am I standing here preaching prosperity? Absolutely not. I'm preaching truth that if you look at Jesus, if you focus on him, he will give you everything you need in your life. Don't focus on getting stuff. Don't focus on making it. Don't focus on the things of the world, but focus on him. And you get the whole lot. Some say seeing is believing, but that's not true because your eyes can be fooled. A more accurate quote is this, believing is seeing. Because when you focus on Jesus, everything else comes into perspective. So I want to, to uh, wrap it up now as we go to our groups. And I want to pray that we would have eyes that would see the Lord's perspective in 2021. Are you with me? Because I believe the rest of the world is in fear. The rest of the world is running scared. The rest of the world is miserable. But I believe we can see Jesus everywhere we look. I believe we can focus on him and the things of earth will grow strangely dim. I believe that we can set our mind on things above and not on earthly things.
So I'm going to ask you to join me. We're going to pray and we're going to give this to the Lord right now. Some of you don't know what your destiny is. You can't see. You don't really have a vision for 2021. But I'm going to pray and believe that the Lord gives you something. Because God has a destiny for all of us. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And he doesn't want you to miss out. He wants you to focus on him. So why don't you bow your heads and we're going to pray together. Lord, I pray that you would just speak to our hearts right now. That you would give us eyes to see what you have for us in 2021 and beyond. I want you to pray this prayer with me, everyone. And let's just, let's just make a clean start right now and get our vision right, right at the start of 2021. Let's get it right. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I choose to focus on you in 2021. I choose to let the things of earth grow strangely dim. I choose to see Jesus on every face, in every circumstance. If things go right or go wrong, I choose to see Jesus. And I ask, Father, that you would give me eyes that see the world around me in a fresh way because they are fixed on you. Lord, I pray that you would hear these prayers this morning. They come from genuine, open hearts. We want to have vision that sees you. We want to have vision that honors you. We want to have vision, Lord, that leads us into our destiny because we know and trust you. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Show us clearly what you have for us in 2021, that we might serve you and honor you. Just before we go to groups, I just want to do one thing, just as every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I want to pray for fresh vision for some of you. If you feel like you've lost your vision somewhere along the line, that you're not walking with the Lord or, or that maybe you're walking with the Lord, but it just seems foggy out there. I just want you to stand wherever you are. Just stand up. And I just want to pray that the Lord gives you a fresh vision. If that's you, just stand up wherever you are. There'll be a few of you because it's a really difficult thing. Some of you are not sure where you're going. You're not sure what the future holds. Just search your heart. I'm not going to call you forward. I just want you to stand up where you are. And I'm going to ask the Lord to give you a fresh vision. Don't miss out on this. If you know where you're going, fair enough. If God's revealed a vision to you, that's great. But if you haven't got a vision for this year, if you're not sure, just stand where you are and we will pray together and we will believe together that God is going to open an incredible vision for your future. Are there any more before we pray? Just very quickly as we wrap it up. Okay, Lord, there are many people here who are standing, who are believing you for a fresh vision right now. But Father, I pray that you would implant in them your vision. Not their vision, but your vision. Lord, I pray that you would open the doors for them to move into the destiny that you have for them. Lord, that you would open the way that they will be able to serve you and honor you in everything that they do. And Lord, give them a fresh God vision as we move forward. Lord, give them a fresh understanding. Lord, I pray that you would lay your hands upon them and that you would bless them, bless their life, bless their heart that is willing to stand and say, yes, Lord, I need to see your vision. Lord, I pray that you give them fresh vision in Jesus' name. Amen.